Well, hello. I don't. This, this is Jonathan Stewart, and I'm here for. We're going to turn this essentially into a screencast um, for the Canyons Mini U uh, PD today. Um, let me share my screen really quickly. So hopefully we'll have somebody joining us. But I, what I wanted to walk everyone through today is looking at the learning and looking at these learning intentions, setting up your course navigation, creating Canvas modules, importing sandbox or prior courses, importing content and templates to using Canvas Commons and using the copy to and send to features to share content. So let's go ahead and get started with setting up course navigation. So I have set up a demo course. This is a fresh course that I use just for demonstration purposes today. When I look on here, I look and it's got all this stuff on the side. I go to my Canvas expectations. I look and oh, there's not there's a lot less things that I should be doing. So the first thing I need to do is clean up my navigation. This enables it to be consistent and less cluttery for students. It also enables it occasionally students are able to access material that you do not intend for them to access because of the course navigation on the side. So if I go down here to if I go on my home page down to settings, it will bring up a navigation. Oh, look at all these things on that. And all these things here. The top part is what the students can see. The bottom part is what the students can't see. There are two ways that I can kind of clean this up. I can just hit disable like this, or I can just drag it down and put it in the list right there. I'm just going to go ahead and disable this. Now let me look at the Canvas style guide. We'll pretend that I am teaching K5. Okay. Uh, home announcements module in grades. So let me make sure that's in the order. Home announcements module. I'm going to move up in grades. Now it looks like there are some optional things. Google Drive, Clever, Badges, and Connect Ed. I don't use Connect Ed, and I don't use Badges, so that wouldn't help me. But Google Drive and Clever might be a benefit to me. So I will go ahead and make sure, let's you know, move up Google Drive. Let's see if Clever is on my list. Oh, I don't see it. No, oh, it looks like it's not on here at all. So if I, so I think that's been temporarily disabled, but I will be sure to add that back when it shows up. This is a list you can go back and edit at any time, but for you right now, um, we'll just kind of, disable things as is. Now you may think, oh, I use Nearpods. Why would I disable this from the students to view? The reason is um, it keeps the navigation clean and you can access Nearpods. You just have to do it through another means. Students won't access it directly. And trust us, this will be better. Um, quizzes is something students will do, but they'll do it in the context of modules. All right, I've almost got all my things disabled. All right, so I've got everything but Clever, and I don't see Clever as an option. So I'll just have to live with that. I hit Save. Now watch what happens over here. You'll notice it has this disabled or not visible to student icon on all of these features. Um, if they're things native to Canvas, you'll still you'll still see and have access to these things as a teacher. But if it's an external tool like InfoBits or ConnectEd, 
that you won't, the student won't see it. Um, we're actually going to go and look as a student. This is an option you can do. See where it says student view. This is so I can check my work. I'm going to hit student view right there. And voila, homes, home grades in Google Drive. So you wonder why haven't I, why don't I see anything else? Well, it's not showing announcements because I haven't made any. We won't talk about that today. It's not showing modules because I have to create a module. So the next thing, next thing we're going to talk about is creating Canvas modules. So if I go to the demo course, it prompts me to create a new module. I can either create that here and here with this button, or I can create it right here. If I go to the modules section, we'll go ahead and create a module. I modules are just the organizational structure within Canvas. I can create modules for anything I like. If I'm in elementary, I might create a module per week and then embed all my content within that. If I'm in secondary, I might organize my modules by units. Um, I would say whatever um, flow works in your course, but those are probably the two most common, is to either do it by date or to do it by by unit, by topic, um, you know, whichever small chunk of information helps to organize your course. I'm going to go ahead and say week, week one. I'll add the module. Now that module is added. Now we have to add things to it. Hmm. Now I remember that in my, I call it, play course, it's for most people called a sandbox course. I remember I had information I wanted to bring over. Now, how do I do that? There are a couple different ways. So the first thing I can do is I can just bring over the whole course. Hmm. So I can either import existing content. You can ask for right there. You can also do this in setting. You can do a whole course. Let's go look for play course. And you'll notice when I do that, the play course that I have up here, which has all my things in it, shows up. I can do the whole course if I want to, or I can choose to import specific things. Now, if I choose to import specific things, if you hit all content, that's, that's straightforward. If you pick specific things, I'll hit import. Now it's waiting for me, because it's waiting for me to choose what do I want to import. Hmm. So I could, I could click all of this, but then I just copy the whole course. Or I can say, OK, I want, I want to import all, this, all of these modules, because these were with sex education, and that that part is all set, and I don't need to do anything to it. I just select this content. You'll notice that it's queued. That's meaning that means it's in line for other people to bring it in. And when I come back, that will eventually move over. Now, what if I want to import stuff from Cam Canvas Commons? I can actually find both. Oh, we notice it's running, and that pretty soon I'll have my um, I'll have my content from my prior course imported. Now, again, if I now there are a couple places to actually get more information. I can import content in temp and a templates from Canvas Commons. Hmm, that's interesting. Now, how do I get to Canvas Commons? The way I get to Canvas Commons is see the little Commons right here. I go here. Canvas Commons is basically a warehouse library where you're able to find all kinds of different things. You'll notice there's some featured things. But let's let's do this. Let's see. I want to look for a template for my course so that I can make the design look similar. So we're going to search Canyons templates. 
Okay, there's a professional development course. If I were doing, and that's for all grades, I can take a look at that and see a preview. Hmm. Looks very, um, let's see, there's different pages and discussions. Now it looks, I'm looking more for elementary, so that doesn't really do me any good. So let's do Canvas elementary template. Let's see what that brings. Let's do elementary template. You'll notice there are many types of elementary templates. If we go back, notice there are also some course templates here. Oh, these are featured ones for canyons created by Camille Cole. That one looks kind of fun. Ooh, I really like this Western theme one. Hmm. Let me take a look at that. I'm going to click on the template. All right, what do these pages what do these pages look like? All right. That doesn't really help me. Let's see what these pages look like. Class overview. Oh, I really like that right there. Let's see. Let's see what their week one. Oh, I like the cactus. So it has all these buttons for me. Now also I notice it has a place where I can just put in my information. I like this. So if I want to import that information, all I have to do is hit import download right there. Click. It will bring that in. It will ask me, which course do I want to do? Well, I have quite a few, but what I'm really doing is I'm going to put it in this demo course because I know that's new. When your courses are published for your students, this will show up on this list. I'll click here, All right, import, and I'll just import it to the course. And then, as it says, it may take a little while, but I'll be able to see changes. Now, let's say I want to find actual content. So I will switch gears to secondary. I teach health too, and I know that there are question banks because my specialist, that would be me, says that there are question. Oh, look at this. Health two question banks. All right, this will give me a question bank that I can create quizzes, quizzes from. I'm also able to import that. I'll just click import again. I'll find my course. So I'm not only able to import templates and, and things to make things look pretty, but I'm also able to import content. Um, you can search for content from other people. Um, you may have teachers that you work with that use commons that you're able to take content from. Just know if you're getting stuff from someone you don't know or out of district, um, we cannot vouch for how well done it is, and that may end up being more work for you. Just something to keep in mind. All right, so we've got that. Now, the last thing I want to cover is using the copy and send to features to share content. So let me go ahead and go back to my course. So you'll notice, all right, we're done in comments. So now I'm gonna go back to my course. Let's see, where is my, let's see, demo. We're going to actually go to my course and find it again. I don't have it on my dashboard. So I'm going to go to all courses and let's look for the there we go. Demos course Canyon U. All right. So I found the course. You'll notice all the content I put in earlier that I imported is there, all right? And all the stuff from the templates that I imported is here. Okay, that's great. 
Now I need to do two other things. Notice I do not have a home page. I need to designate a home page. So we're going to do that real quick. In pages, you'll notice that this is designated as the front page. I'm going to click on view all pages and make sure that is what I want to be the front page. My template gave me a home page to choose from. But if I have something I'm importing from somewhere else, I can designate and make it the front page. I won't do that because I already have one. Now, when I go to the home page, oh, it designates it as modules. I don't want that. We're going to choose a home page that's not just my modules, but that actually welcomes students as they come in. So you can choose from a, a lot of different, uh, several different options. But the one we want to do is probably make it a page that we actually create. And that's that front page. And you'll notice that's labeled as home page. So we know it's the correct one. I'll hit save. And voila, that changed to being my home page. That wasn't one of our learning intentions and success criteria, but that's fine. Now, let's say I have my second grade teacher down the hall, and she wants, she said, oh, that's such a cute home page. Can you send that to me? I love how you've got everything laid out. I can, I can send, actually send it to her. I say send to, and let's say her name happened to be Sally Ann Wakely. I just start typing her name, it comes up. All right. She's for some reason in here four times, but we're gonna choose Sally Ann Wakely. And I can also send it to Susan Henry. All right, Susan Henry, there you are. So I'm going to send this to both of those. If I hit send, this will send this page to them, and they will be able to use it. Well, that's exciting. But let's say it's not a person I want to send it to. Let's Again, let's go back to our secondary. Let's say I have something in my sandbox course, or as I like to call it, my play course, and I don't want to send like a whole bunch of modules, but I'm on a specific page and I go, you know, I really want to send, I just want to send that page, but I want to send it to all my stuff. I want to send this health textbook training. I need to send that page. So I click on the page itself. Again, we have the options of sending it to someone, or I can just copy this page and go copy to. Now, where do I want to copy it to? Oh, it has like, all these courses. Now, so let's type the name of my course and we call it Demo Course Canyon School. So I type that in, voila. And I can select a module that I want to send it to in Canyon to you. I want to send it to my week one module there. Ooh, it even gives me options of where I want to put it there. I'm going to put it at the bottom. So we'll just hit copy. And now it's started. Again, it may take a minute for things to show up. Just be patient. And now if I go to the demo course, I go to module, I go to week one. Look at that. The page that I transferred over made it there. I hope that everyone, let me stop sharing for a minute. I hope that everyone has enjoyed this tutorial on how to do some of these basics. Setting up your course navigation, creating Canvas modules, importing sandbox or prior course content, importing content and templates using Canvas Commons, and using the copy and send to features so that you can share content with your colleagues. If you have any questions, you can look at my video or the other video that was done um, with these. And hopefully this helps you as you get on your journey with, with Canvas. Thank you.